Welcome to Scoro. Scoro helps bring together your team's projects, sales, finances, and reports. In this video, we will walk you through in detail how to manage your contacts, compile quotes, manage projects, get reports based on your work, and invoice your clients once the work is done. Finally, we will see how to bring all this together to one or more customizable dashboards for daily use. When you log into Scoro, the first thing you will see is your dashboard. You can customize it with widgets and metrics that are important for you. Before we dig in deeper, there are two important buttons that you should keep in mind, Help and Settings. From the Help menu, you can quickly access various materials in our Help Center that guide you through Scoro in great detail. The articles and videos you see here will always be relevant to the view that you're currently in. Also, the Settings button will always suggest settings relevant to the current view. By typing in the search box, you can find all other settings not displayed in the suggestions. Who can access and edit settings or any info in Scoro can be defined by the site administrator under Roles and Permissions. Now that you know that help is always around the corner and that you can configure all aspects of Scoro, let's take a look at how to use Scoro for your day-to-day -day business. To get started with a new client, add them to Scoro as a contact. You can do this from the Quick Actions menu or from the Contacts view. In the Contacts view, you can see a list of all your contacts. There are two types of contacts in Scoro, people and companies. It's up to you whether to display them in a single list like you can currently see or in two separate lists. You can change this under Contact Settings. You'll find that bookmarks, filters, summary bars, and list views work in the same way across all of Scoro. Any list view can be customized using filters and view settings. Filters allow you to decide exactly what and how you want to see. For example, once you've set up your contacts tags and categories, you'll be able to use these as filters. Let's filter out all contacts that work in the media industry. Let's filter further and choose the contacts that don't have any activities connected to them in the future. So you'll know who you need to get in touch with. Now we filtered out all the media contacts that you need to follow up with. Let's assume that this list is something you need to check often. Instead of filtering manually every time, you can save this list as a bookmark to quickly access it in the future. When creating or modifying a bookmark, you can choose to add it as a favorite, which you can access in any view across Scoro. You can quickly modify a contact's info by clicking on the company or person icon. This is the same view you will see when creating a new contact. Here you can add all the contact information. Some of these fields can also be set up as mandatory, so your team never forgets to add an important phone number or email address before saving a new contact. This can also be done in other views in Scoro. Additionally, you can define the tags and categories of the contact to find them in the list view. You can also link your team members to the contact. For example, the salesperson or project manager responsible for the contact is usually added as the account manager. Additionally, you can define whether the contact is a client or a supplier. For clients, you can choose a client profile, which will help you predefine certain pricing, discount, and other options that make your sales process easier and faster. Next, let's save the contact. After working with a client for a while, you'll start seeing all the information connected to them in the same view. In the header section, you can see all the relevant details you entered when creating the contact. On the right-hand side, you can see the related people and companies and quickly access them with just one click. You can also store all the files connected to this contact, either by uploading the relevant files directly or integrating Scoro with Google Drive, Dropbox, or your FTP server. Under Planned Activities, you can see all the upcoming tasks and calendar events linked with this client. Once these activities are done, you'll be able to see them under Past Activities. Scrolling down, you can get an overview of all the projects, quotes, and contracts related to this client, alongside a complete financial history. 
At the very bottom is the comments section. Here you can easily add notes, discuss or share insights about the client instead of constant status update meetings. Now that everything you need to know about each and every client is on one page, let's schedule a meeting with one of them. For scheduling meetings with both your clients and team members, you can use the calendar. With Squirrel's calendar, you can not only manage your own events, but also see the calendars of your team members and customize the calendar view to look exactly how you want it to by using various filters and view options. When you're adding or modifying an event, you can define the name, time, and duration. Choose an activity type that tells you what sort of activity this event is. If used consistently, activity types will give you an overview in the work report of how your team is using their time. All events are added to the relevant work reports automatically, so there's no need to manually log time spent on them. If other people on your team should attend the meeting, add them as participants. You can also choose the resources that will be needed during this meeting. Resources give you an overview of when a room or other shared equipment is available. You can customize your resources under Settings. Lastly, you can link the event to a client, project, and more. If you link the event to a contact with a valid email address, you can also send out a calendar invite with previously defined content. Once you've linked an event with the relevant project, contact, or document in Squirrel, you can easily access these in a single click from the calendar view. Now that we've covered adding a contact and scheduling a meeting with them, let's add a quote by returning to the contact view straight from the calendar. You can create a quote in several ways, either from the quick actions, the quotes list, or the pipeline view. In this video, we're going to create a quote directly from the contact detailed view. When creating a quote from the contact view, the client field will be pre-filled. You can choose the contact person the quote will be sent to and many other details. You can set up default values, so instead of managing quotes across spreadsheets and emails, your team can really focus on growing sales and delivering more value to your customers. Let's continue by adding products or services to the quote. When you have previously set up the prices, descriptions, and other details, you can simply make a selection from the list and Scoro does the rest for you. You can even specify the cost for each item on the quote and see a quick overview of the margin. Don't worry, this won't be displayed on the quote you send to your customer. Once you've saved the quote, you can send it to the client in just two clicks. The quote will be attached as a PDF file to an email, the content of which you can set up beforehand using email templates. You can customize the design of the PDF either on your own or with the help of Scoro's onboarding experts. Set up your signature in SMTP under email settings to make sure the email reaches the client without any interruptions. From here, keeping track of your quotes is a breeze with the list view and the pipeline view. You can get a quick update on the status of all your opportunities as they move from one stage to the next. Statuses can be customized to best match the stages in your sales process. Using the pipeline report, you'll always know whether you have enough opportunities on the horizon to meet your sales goals and how much income you can expect in the future. Once the client confirms the quote, you can simply drag it into completed status. Now that the quote's confirmed, let's create a project. You can start a new project from just about anywhere in Scoro. From the Quick Actions menu, by going to the Projects list, or from the Client view. You can also use project templates to easily set up your most common projects. Today, we're going to use the original quote and convert it into a project. Open the quote and scroll down to the Use Data on Quote 2 button, and here you will have the option to create a project based on the quote. As you can see, some fields are already filled in, such as the client and estimated duration. The duration is the summary of the quote's line items, but you can always change that to add some buffer time. The project budget is automatically added based on quoted prices, so you can keep track of what you've originally planned versus the actual income or cost 
that will be linked with this project. Alternatively, you can choose either a simple or detailed budget. You can learn more about budgets in our Help Center. Let's add a project name, specify the deadline, and choose the project members. Tick the box for members only access if only project members should be able to view the project. Otherwise, everyone who has permissions to view other people's projects can access it. Add tags to your project so it's easier to find later. If you're dealing with a longer project, you can add phases and milestones to further structure your work. For example, research and design. This step is entirely optional and depends on your workflow. After you've saved the project, you can see the project detailed view similar to the contact view. In the top section, you can see the project manager and other team members involved in the project, all the necessary dates, and a progress bar that starts filling up as you complete activities. If you've added phases and milestones, you can get a visual overview of the project timeline. Further down the page, you can see the project info, all the files in Google Docs related to the project, and any project-related contacts so your team always knows who to get in touch with. There's also an overview of the budget, followed by planned and past activities, the original quote, and all the financials connected to the project. You can use comments to discuss details or share notes with the team. Once you've created the project, it's time to start planning the work. You can create tasks from the planned activities section, the task list, or quick actions. But to save valuable time, we can go back to the quote and convert the items on the quote into tasks with all the necessary information already filled out. Since the items on the quote will be done in the design phase, let's choose this under the project. Link the task with a relevant activity type to get an accurate overview of the time you and your team spend on a project-related task. When you've created the tasks, they're visible under the project's planned activities. But let's say the project also includes a preparation phase where your team has a kickoff meeting and needs to do some initial work to start the project. To avoid spending time on creating tasks for a project each time, you can create a predefined list of tasks and simply add them to a project when needed. This is called a task bundle, and you can set those up beforehand for different types of projects and workflows under tasks. You can also create recurring tasks, get an interactive overview with the task board, or log time using the timesheet view. Once you've created the tasks, you can use the planner to assign the work to your team. You'll always have an overview of your team's availability with the Utilization Report. You can learn more about the Utilization Report and the Planner in our Help Center. You can get an overview of all your projects in the Project List view. Filter out the projects you want to see and choose what information to display. Let's choose Progress, Time Planned, Total Done, Income, Cost and Profit to get a comprehensive overview of your project portfolio. You can again save this view as a bookmark and come back to it whenever you need it. In addition to getting an overview in your list view, Squirrel's automatically compiled reports provide you with even more information on the time spent as well as the financial side of your business. We'll cover Squirrel's reports in more detail later in this video. For now, let's get back to our project and start finalizing it. Once the work is done, it's time to invoice the client. You can create an invoice for the work done in several different ways. The easiest way is to open the quote and transfer all the information to the invoice. and simply save it and send it. This will save you hundreds of hours in the long run. If you've done work on the project that wasn't included on the original quote, but still needs to be billed to the client, click on the header for past activities. 
This will take you to the work report where you can see all of the done activities for this project. You can also get to this view by clicking on reports, choosing the detailed work report, and filtering out the project. To create an invoice, simply tick the boxes in front of the activities and a Create Invoice button will appear. You can learn more about how to set up everything related to time billing in our Help Center. If you have bills connected to the project that are chargeable to the client, Squirrel will ask you whether you want to include these on the invoice. Now that you have all the chargeable items listed on the invoice, you can specify any details or just save the invoice. Once you've saved the invoice, you can send it out to the client and the invoice will be attached as a PDF. Just like for the quotes, the PDF templates for invoices are fully customizable. Once the client has paid the invoice, you can mark the invoice as paid in the invoice view, in the invoices list, or in the project view. All of this can be integrated with your accounting software such as QuickBooks or Xero, so your invoices and payments are automatically synced. With the project finished, we can now go back and mark it as completed. There are a lot of different reports in Scoro to cover your entire business. The most customizable reports are the detailed work report and the detailed financial report. Let's take a look at the work report first. By using numerous different filters, you can configure the report to see exactly the information that matters to you. You can save any filtered view as a bookmark to quickly access your most frequently used reports. See what a specific team member worked on last month or group the view by projects and see how much time is being spent on each project as a team. On the financial side, you can get a detailed overview of your company's quotes, as well as income and costs. You can filter this information by project, by client, and in hundreds of other ways to get a customized report on any aspect of your financials. Everything on Scoro comes together on the dashboard. The dashboard can be used as a really powerful reporting tool. Use bookmarks to create widgets and metrics to bring out all of your most important action items and key performance indicators. Use dashboards to get an overview of different teams, projects, or your business as a whole to make sure everything is under control. Customize the view by modifying the sections or by dragging and dropping the dashlets and share it with your team. For daily use, create your own personal dashboard, add your tasks, calendar, projects and more to see exactly what you need to know and do. More info on all of the features mentioned in this video can be found in our Help Center. Now that you know how Squirrel works, it's time to start working smarter, not harder.